The very latest on Hurricane Dorian, winds of 145 miles an hour, and you just look at the structure of this storm is incredible. We've colorized our infrared satellite to really give you an idea of those colder cloud tops. In other words, the taller cloud tops, the greatest uh, storms right around the center of circulation, and they just keep generating themselves. It would be nice if we saw some dry air maybe getting entrained in there to start weakening parts of it. That is just not happening. And then the upper atmosphere, really there's not much to hit any further development. The only thing that may kind of allow the strength to plateau is the fact that we are expecting Dorian to slow down. What that does as the storm slows down, it actually starts what's called upwelling of colder water in the Atlantic. That colder water will help to start weakening the storm. Now, not dramatic, and again, it kind of counterbalances itself. The storm is trying to strengthen, the colder water is trying to weaken it, and so the storm strength just kind of plateaus, which is why the Hurricane Center does not take this to a Category 5, although that is still very much possible, but maintains it as still a very powerful Category 4 storm. Again, the trend of the models has been to keep this off of the Florida coast. And since last night, that is what the Hurricane Center is mirroring as well. Now notice the entire state of Florida is still well within the margin of error, but that error keeps kind of getting shifted more and more eastward, which is great news for the folks in Florida. Now that would still keep some of the heaviest of the rains over Florida, but the worst of the storm, the strongest winds and the more intense rains would stay off in the Atlantic Basin, which again is great news. If there's any silver lining there, it's that the outflow from this storm is just unbelievable. In other words, in the upper parts of the atmosphere, you get this almost exhaust where the storm is allowed to grow and continue to expand. And right now the storm is moving kind of following along an upper high and this upper low that is now moving south of Florida. That's kind of been keeping uh, Dorian on that track towards the west. And this weekend, the high is going to stay there. Dorian will continue along the west, and then the high will also start shifting eventually to the east, which is when Dorian begins that turn up to the north. The high begins to retreat a bit off the east coast. We're going to have an east coast trough dipping down, and Dorian is going to follow that weakness. Again, we have been talking about the fact that a slow Lower Dorian would make that turn sooner or be allowed to make that turn because the slower Dorian goes, the more chance this upper high has of kind of breaking down and shifting a bit more and allowing Dorian to stop turning west and start turning more northwest and north. And that's exactly what the computer models have been indicating. The GFS, again, the Carolina is going to be watching this one very closely. GFS keeping Dorian off the coast of Florida, as does the Euro. The Euro really was the first one to start picking up on this trend of maybe keeping it off the east coast of Florida altogether. Again, strongest winds, heaviest rains would stay over the Atlantic. As I mentioned before, though, the Bahamas, the northern islands are still going to be impacted by a major hurricane. Now,